I'm Izzy Neves, and for the SRP program, I had the amazing opportunity to work with Dr. Shu from the Department of Nursing in the College of Health and Human Sciences. And we've been working on creating an end of life resource for Parkinson's disease. Before I jump into the research project, I first just wanted to find some terms that will aid in understanding. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about Parkinson's disease and palliative care. So Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disorder, meaning that it does get progressively worse with time. Essentially in Parkinson's, neurons begin to die in the region of the brain called the substantia nigra. This part of the brain plays a major role in dopamine production, as well as in movement control, cognitive executive function, and emotional limbic activity. So when the neurons in the substantia nigra begin to die or stop working, dopamine production is lost and an individual will start to experience things such as a tremor, slowness, stiffness, and issues with coordination and balance. But other parts of Parkinson's that are not as widely acknowledged are constipation, depression, issues with memory, and other non-motor symptoms. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, as of right now, there is no cure for Parkinson's disease and the treatment options available are used to try to control and reduce the symptoms of the disease. It's also important to note that Parkinson's is not a one size fits all disease. So all treatment plans are different and will depend on the symptoms that an individual is experiencing. But the most common therapies are levodopa, which is a medication and movement therapy and movement therapies. And finally, Parkinson's tends to be categorized into five stages. The beginning stage is being characterized by mild symptoms, such as a tremor in one hand or a clumsy leg. And the advanced stage is being characterized by severe symptoms, such as an inability to walk and hallucinations or delusions. By stage five, which is the most advanced, individuals will typically be wheelchair bound. There's obviously a ton more that comes with the disease, but those are just the fundamentals. And palliative care. When most people think of palliative care, they tend to associate it with end of life, hospice, or illnesses such as terminal cancer. But the truth is that palliative care can be used at any stage in any illness. The goal of palliative care is to develop an interdisciplinary care team, such as nutritionists, social workers, financial advisors, and chaplains, to provide an extra layer of support for patients and to increase their levels of comfort. It has a focus on quality of life and aims to allow patients to have control and understanding over their treatment plans and care. A very important element of palliative care is advanced care planning, which is a process that supports people in understanding and discussing their personal values, preferences, and goals, re and goals regarding future medical care. Though it's a popular belief that advanced care planning is something people do towards the end of life, it is actually a process that supports people at any age or in any stage of illness. Um, some examples of decisions that might come up during advanced care planning are ventilator use, do not resuscitate orders, and artificial nutrition, so something like tube feeding. Palliative care and advanced care planning are not limited to terminal illnesses in old age. The whole point of this type of care is to create a care plan that meets the patient goals and values and provides ongoing support for both the patient and the caregiver, and it also provides education. So what happens when you apply palliative care to Parkinson's disease? Incorporating palliative care and specifically advanced care planning into Parkinson's may assist patients and their families in conversations about the future, be better prepared for difficult end-of-life medical decisions, and ensure personal values and goals are being respected. Applying palliative care to Parkinson's is still a relatively new and emerging thing, but prior research studies have found that patients with Parkinson's disease may benefit from palliative care in terms of impact of the disease and overall quality of life. Palliative care aims to improve patient autonomy by, by introducing aspects such as advanced care planning at an early stage in the disease. This allows patients to feel like they are in control of their treatment and care plans, which in turn may relieve some of the burdens and fears that come with a Parkinson's diagnosis. But beyond allowing the patients to feel in control of their diagnosis and future, palliative care may also provide relief for caregivers by promoting communication. When a loved one is diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, it's common for the caregiver to feel helpless, confused, and lost. They have to figure out how to manage simple tasks, such as going to the grocery store, while also ensuring that their loved one is being adequately cared for. In diseases like Parkinson's, it's extremely difficult for caregivers to find a balance between caring for the patient and caring for themselves. But palliative care may help relieve this burden by providing caregivers with methods to better assist their loved ones, such as how to bathe and dress the patient without causing physical discomfort to themselves. Palliative care takes into account the frustrations and sadness that may come with caregiving and can work with caregivers to establish plans that focus on their own health and well-being. And palliative care also provides education, 
When facing a diagnosis like Parkinson's, it can be extremely confusing and overwhelming, and there's a lot to the disease that may be complex or difficult to understand. Palliative care aims to provide education on the disease, such as what to expect in each stage of the disease and treatment plans available so that both the caregiver and patient can adequately prepare and feel less intimidated by the unknown. So this research study aims to create an end of life resource specific to Parkinson's disease that captures the challenges and decisions often faced within the, within the disease so that individuals and their caregivers can feel in control of their care and feel a sense of ease as they transition into advanced disease. The study identifies unique Parkinson's disease specific challenges and decisions that need to be included in a Parkinson's end of life resource. Through this end of life resource, we hope to improve autonomy by allowing patients to be educated on the progression of Parkinson's disease and have the luxury of knowing and choosing their treatment. We hope to improve, in, we hope to improve communication for both the patient and the caregiver by providing disease expectations and common challenges that are faced. And we hope to establish comfort and transform perceptions of end of life care. End of life does not have to be a dreadful and scary experience. It can be a place where values are met and the utmost consideration is put into making it an easy transition. So our study is ongoing and we've only conducted a few interviews so far. So we don't have conclusive results or a final draft of the end of life resource yet, but I'm just gonna walk you through the process so you can understand what we're doing. So we're conducting interviews with healthcare providers that care for patients with Parkinson's on a monthly basis, and also with caregivers who have lost a person to Parkinson's in the last two years. Before we conduct the interviews, participants are sent consent forms as well as a draft of our end of life resource. Caregivers are also sent an additional document on mental health resources that focus on losing a family member or a loved one, just in case they need some extra support. And each interview is around an hour long and questions differ slightly for the healthcare provider and the caregiver. For the healthcare provider, we ask questions that focus on how end of life decisions may be different for those with Parkinson's, to the, Parkinson's disease, things such as hospitalizations and ventilation, as well as questions on how they have advanced care planning conversations with their patients and the challenges faced with that. During interviews with the caregivers, we ask questions such as how they began their advanced care planning conversations and challenges they faced during end of life care. And in both interviews, regardless of whether or not it's with a healthcare provider or a caregiver, we go over the draft of the end of life resource and we have developed and we ask if there's anything missing, whether that be like a commonly faced symptom or a challenge. And then we ask for suggestions on how to improve the resource so that it can adequately capture the major challenges and decisions in end of life care for Parkinson's. So here's just like a further in depth view of the process of this research. So we conduct the interviews, all of them being around an hour long. And then after that's over, we transcribe them. So we have a written copy that we can analyze in in vivo, which is a software program that is used to analyze data and trends in the interviews. We'll then apply all the suggestions and things missing into a finalized version of the end of life resource. So our preliminary results indicate hospital hospitalizations and nursing home stays are uniquely challenging in Parkinson's due to medication concerns, such as patients not receiving their medications on time, which in turn can make it difficult to participate in their other therapies. Lack of preparation for emotional difficulties in the disease is another trend we've noticed. While the physical declines are well known in Parkinson's, the emotional difficulties are not, and many are unprepared for those symptoms. And, management, me and medication management becomes much more challenging in advanced illness as well, with many decisions that need to be made to, be to balance mobility control with cognitive control. So once the study is complete, we hope to have a finalized end of life resource that encompasses the major decisions and challenges that may be faced in Parkinson's so that caregivers and patients can feel in control of their diagnosis and at ease with the future. By the end of this research study, we also hope to know the best ways to present this study, whether that be in a pamphlet form or something that includes videos as well. We wanna have it readily available for patients to access and hope that it becomes a tool that healthcare providers can give to their patients with Parkinson's. Another important thing this study hopes to address is the best time to give a resource like this, whether that be in the beginning stages of Parkinson's disease or somewhere in the mid stages. So because of licensing reasoning, I can't op upload a direct picture of a pamphlet. So we're gonna click on the link here. So here's just an example of an advanced care planning pamphlet from Prepare, 
This is a very general pamphlet that doesn't focus on a specific disease, but it just gives a kind of idea of what our final end of life resource for Parkinson's could look like. Um, so just as something to leave you with, I just wanted to give this quote by Frank C. Church, who is a researcher that was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. He says, challenging times lead to challenging decisions. Embrace the challenge and trust your instincts to make the best decision. We hope that the creation of this end of life resource can allow future caregivers, healthcare providers, and individuals with Parkinson's disease, the ability to embrace the challenges that come with the disease and find a way to overcome and conquer instead of falling into the fear of end of life. So thank you so much for listening to this presentation. I really appreciate it. And I had so much fun in this program. Thank you.